Hello everyone, it's Chad, and today I'd like to show you how to set up um, your cloud server. Uh, we'll walk through some of the initial steps of um, uh, setting up your cloud server, kind of securing it, locking it down, and getting it prepped and ready uh, to install any uh, application stack that you so choose. Um, I'm going to break this into various videos uh, that will uh, show you how to move forward um, after this initial configuration, how to move forward and install things like um, Apache, PHP, MySQL, uh, amongst other things. But for the purposes of this demo here, we'll actually uh, just provision a brand new cloud server, log in, uh, lock it down, um, create a new user, um, get everything updated and ready to go. So let's go ahead and start by logging into the control panel. Go over to hosting and then to cloud servers. And so we have a couple of existing cloud servers here. We'll just start a new one from scratch. Uh, you can choose anywhere from a 256 meg to a 15 and a half gig cloud server. Uh, since we're just uh, doing a demo here, we'll go ahead and leave it a uh, small instance. And uh, we'll call it Web1. Let's just say this is going to be our basic web server here. And then go ahead and choose uh, pretty much any Linux distribution of your choice. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'll be using Debian, which is uh, my preferred distribution. And then we'll go ahead and add cloud server. And we'll give it just a minute here um, to go ahead and spin up. It'll take about 60 to 90 seconds. Go ahead and grab the root password. It'll also email you this as well, just in, uh, just in case you don't get it in time, because it only flashes for a few seconds up there. If you haven't watched my other cloud server um, introduction video, uh, there's quite a um, few nice options here in the control panel for managing your server instances from a high level. So you can see we have some basic stats here, the name of the server, build status. Uh, what size it is, amount of storage, bandwidth in and out that's been utilized, our public facing IP address, as well as which data center this cloud server is deployed in, and if backups are enabled or not. We also have a few other useful um, tools here in the, the control panel, such as console, which allows you to launch a live uh, web-based console to interact with your cloud server. We can uh, perform uh, soft or hard reboots uh, right here. Launch rescue mode if for some reason our server is not booting properly and we need to get access to uh, the files on there to fix that. Rebuild mode allows us to um, um, actually re-image our cloud server instance with, uh, from one of our backups or with an, a new distribution if you so choose without losing your IP address. Reset that root password and then delete which is pretty self-explanatory. If this is a temporary project uh, or you only need this particular instance for a short amount of time you can easily delete that and uh, your charges stop immediately. There's also tools for setting up uh, DNS, uh, reverse DNS, uh, scheduling your backups, and then grabbing some general uh, diagnostic information. If you want to see more in depth there, you can actually watch my previous introduction to cloud servers video. But as we can see here, the server is now fully launched. Let's go ahead and uh, fire up our, you know, your preferred terminal application. I'm going to get logged in here. See our server's up and running just that quick. And now we're logged in. You can see here it's a total of 256 megs of RAM. The first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and change that root password to something uh, very strong and secure. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and add a new user. Uh, you never want to run um, as root on your server at all, so let's go ahead and just create a new user um, to start with. Well, let's call this Chad. Create another good strong password, different from your root password for this user here. And then the next thing we want to do is give this particular user um, uh, super user privileges. We'll do by sudo. And then scroll down here and go ahead and add our user right under this line. Now that that's done, we'll actually be able to uh, run various commands uh, as our user um, that you would normally need root privileges for, uh, which is going to be uh, essential. Uh, 
And the next thing we'll do is uh, make a couple quick changes to our SSH configuration. Let's go ahead and pull up the uh, SSH configuration file. And one of the things I definitely recommend is switching um, your SSH port to listen on something, um, something highly random. Call it 30,022. Something that helps against uh, things like brute force attacks and uh, just using non standard ports is a, a simple security method. A couple other things that we'll change in here is um, turning off uh, root logins. Because as I mentioned before, we don't want to run as root. And you have the ability to, to set up SSH keys. Um, towards the end of this demonstration, I'll link you to our knowledge base, which has a text walkthrough of everything that we're going through here today. And if you prefer to set up SSH keys on your local machine and turn off um, password authentication, you can do that. Uh, some people like uh, password authentication for various reasons, uh, so we're going to go ahead and uncomment this line here. So password authentication is allowed. And then the last thing that we'll do is scroll down to the bottom of this uh, configuration file. and tell it to allow user Chad uh, to be able to SSH into this box. And that's it for securing um, our SSH configuration. A couple other things that we'll do is take a look at um, IP tables, which is our software firewall. As you can see here, um, IP tables is completely open. Uh, we don't have any configuration uh, files set up at this point. Uh, so right now, all incoming and outgoing connections are allowed um, you know, without limitation. So let's go ahead and set up just a real simple um, set of rules for IP tables, uh, things to allow for traffic on port 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS, and then also allow for our uh, SSH connections to pass through on that custom port that we set up. So let's go ahead and create a new um, file with uh, some test rules here. And I actually have a document open where I'm going to write them all out. Uh, we actually have a copy of these test rules on our knowledge base, which you can use. So let's go ahead and dump these in here. Then, as we can see, um, under the allow SSH connections, we need to come over here. And if you, whatever port that you set SSH to listen on, just go ahead and update that accordingly. If we scroll back up, we'll notice that. Uh, port 80 and port 443 are set to accept uh, connections. There's a couple of other various rules in here, uh, some of which may be self-explanatory. And there's plenty of uh, IP tables guides online if, um, if you have never used IP tables before and aren't familiar with it. Uh, it takes a little bit uh, of getting used to, but once you uh, get around uh, that initial learning curve, it, um, it's a very, very powerful tool. So go ahead and save this file. We'll go ahead and put these uh, these rules in place. So as we can see, when we pull up our IP tables listing. Um, we have our ports open for HTTP and HTTPS traffic, as well as uh, SSH on port 30,022. And then uh, we're rejecting just about everything else. Let's go ahead and save these files uh, to our, uh, our default uh, configuration. And then the last thing that we want to do is set um, our interface, our network interface, to go ahead and launch these rules uh, if the server were to reboot. Typo. So right here, let's add in a little quick line. And if we ever have to reboot our server, we won't have to worry about um, our IP tables um, settings being flushed. All right, 
there we go. Okay, now that we have that set, let's uh, reload our SSH configuration file and test everything out and make sure it works properly. So since we uh, changed our SSH uh, config file, as I mentioned, we'll need to uh, reload that. And that's done. And now we'll open up a new tab here in our terminal, and if everything works properly, we should be able to log in as user Chad. One thing we'll need to do is specify the custom port. And there we go. Now we're logged in as my user. Everything else was set on our root account. Uh, I have full root privileges now on this user, so we can go ahead and close that connection. And we'll be done uh, with root for now. And just the last few things uh, to go ahead and set up. As we can see here, we are running Debian 5.0 Linny. And as I showed you earlier, we have a full 256 megs of RAM. One of the other options uh, that you can use to check your storage space on the command line for your um, actual hard drive uh, storage is uh, the df-h uh, command. And there's a couple things that we can do. Um, you know, this is really personal preference, um, but I'll show you what, um, what I like to do uh, as far as setting up my particular user um, bash profile here. One of the things I uh, immediately do to make easy or to make things easier on the command line is to uh, force a color prompt, which will uh, make things like files and directories easier to read. And then add some extra aliases in here uh, for common commands. As you can see, when I ran the free command, I always typed the uh, the dash m argument, uh, which uh, made it spit out the results in megabytes. So what we can do is, is just make an alias for this. So now when I type free, it automatically does that for me. And you can go into as much detail here as you want. There's all kinds of aliases that you can make. As I mentioned in our a knowledge base online which has uh, a lot of these same steps so uh, there are some other suggestions there as well actually I need to last thing I need to do before those changes will take effect is actually source this file here Now you see when I use the free command, it is now using the alias that we just typed into um, our config file there. Last couple of things is uh, before we're all set and ready to go is uh, to make sure we have an updated um, an updated server. We want to make sure and update all security patches, um, uh, any other um, patches to the OS, things like that, so we can uh, get started with a good clean slate here. Well, the first thing we'll do is uh, use the aptitude tool and get an updated listing uh, from all of our uh, source repositories. And we'll act actually have to run this command with uh, sudo. Right. Get the right password in there. And our server's going to grab all the latest updates.
Looks like one of the repository servers might be having some connectivity issues. I'll just give that a minute. Usually, uh, it takes a couple of seconds to get through this process, especially if it's uh, especially if you just provision your server. So I apologize. It looks like this uh, particular repository here is, um, as I mentioned, having some connectivity issues, uh, the, the USWN org uh, repository. So let's go ahead and skip that step for now and move on. Uh, one of the other things that we want to do is set up some of our regional information. We'll install a few packages. And then we'll go ahead and configure this. Scroll down and choose the appropriate um, appropriate uh, selection here, just depending on your region. And then we'll go ahead and set up our uh, time zone information as well. So we're going to choose our region, central time, and then we're all set. Next thing to do, uh, since we've updated our, um, uh, we've updated our software listings from the repositories is actually run the uh, upgrade which is done in two different commands here always run a safe upgrade first And then once once that's done, we'll run the full upgrade. And that's pretty much it. Uh, one last thing uh, that'll be helpful when installing uh, future software is the Build Essential package, which you can pull directly from Aptitude as well. Uh, something I definitely recommend to install uh, just to resolve future dependencies, uh, make things easier for you. So the last package we'll install uh, for the purposes of this demo. the build essential uh, meta package here. And we'll be good to go. At this point, um, once again, it looks like we're hitting that Debian server that uh, is offline at the moment, so go ahead and skip that there. Uh, but at this point, we have a, a brand new cloud server instance installed with a fresh um, copy of Debian. Uh, we've created our, our main administrative user that's not root, uh, given him root, root privileges. Uh, we've locked down the machine with IP tables, uh, set up a custom uh, SSH configuration uh, that'll be helpful in keeping our server secure as well. We've also uh, customized our, our bash profile for this particular user um, and updated our OS and uh, installed a couple of important packages. In the next di uh, few demos, we'll, I, as I mentioned, we'll actually go through the process of installing and conf configuring Apache, uh, PHP, MySQL, as well as some other apps. So stay tuned and I hope this uh, demo was helpful for you. As I mentioned, we have uh, knowledge bases on the Rackspace Cloud website, which actually walk you through this whole process on text if uh, the video is too fast for you. I just wanted to give you a brief example of just how quickly you can get up and running with a cloud server and, uh, and be um, have everything ready to go on the command line. It seems like a daunting task uh, sometimes, uh, but uh, in, in reality, it's, it's a pretty simple process. So hope this was helpful for you. Thanks.